Skate parks. Some people love them, some people hate them. But they have increasingly become a feature of communities all over the country, with the Isle of Wight alone having 14 of them. But is a skate park a valued facility? If so, who should be responsible for the upkeep and maintenance of parks? Why is the local council not taking a more active role in this important issue? And if a park were to close, what would be its impact on its users and the wider community? These are the questions that this film is trying to answer. Um, well, it's something to do every day. Like, it's just a fun sport to do and it's somewhere to come. Everyone gets on. Well, I've been coming here for around seven or eight years. Been here since uh, it first opened and uh, come down on a regular basis, three or four times a week. Uh, it gives you something to do each day. Like, if I didn't have it, I can, I'd be quite bored a lot. Ride Skate Park was first opened on the 30th of October 2003 and was funded by the Isle of Wight Council. In 2006, the park had reached a point where it had to be closed due to health and safety reasons. Arguments were put forward on what should happen to the park. Should it be demolished or should it be rebuilt? The local users group that we formed in those days, um, they wanted wood, ply, etc. And so that was built that way by a company called uh, Ramp Child. Uh, and, uh, um, it had a lifespan, obviously, being on the seafront of, um, I think it lasted about six years before it started deteriorating. Um, yeah, this, um, it's had a few incarnations and um, me and some friends, we rebuilt it at some point without funding. We, you know, we did it ourselves. And then you have the new incarnation, which is um, the Guido design, which is the bowl. And um, as you guys probably know, it's, it's, it's a bit uh, messed up. I know it's gone through quite a there's probably about three different phases over the last like uh, eight, nine, eight, nine, ten years or so. But like uh, the one at the moment with the bowl, yeah, I think that was a really good idea. It just took a, it took a really long time to sort of build. The Isle of Wight Council controversially made the decision not to fund a rebuild of the park and gave full responsibility to Ride Town Council. Although it was on Isle of Wight Council land, the council, Isle of Wight Council, um, approached us in, at Rye Town Council members and they said um, if you don't take ownership of it in respect to responsibility yourselves, um, we'll, we'll cut it up and take it out. And um, so uh, we formed, within the council, we um, formed a committee, internal, a subcommittee, and um, it's called the Skateboard you know, Users Group again but it's, a, it's an internal uh, made up of councillors. And um, we signed a 25 year lease with the Isle of Wight Council for that particular piece of land. In 2007, the Skate Park Users Committee was set up in order to aid the funding and design of the park. The committee with the support of Rye Town Council managed to raise around 50,000 pound. The official opening took place in April 2011, which was attended by around 4,000 throughout the day. Um, I was involved with the um, doing an opening event there, um, just did a competition and um, uh, just carnage really, it was good. However, the skate park was closed for maintenance only six months later. The maintenance lasted two weeks but did little to solve the problem. We spent two grand a month roughly on it, but we've taken on a staff member on the council that, that it, that's, he keeps an eye on it um, and he, strike, he struck a great relation. Terry. Thorson, he's a retired policeman in Ryde, he's known by the youngsters and uh, there's a bond there and he goes down there and it's kept clean and uh, we've introduced wheelie bins for rubbish, we've, um, uh, well, we've got a contract cleaners that keep it clean. Well the conditions of Ryde Skate Park are pretty terrible to be honest, there's loads of holes everywhere. Um, yeah it's just gradually deteriorating, it's falling apart. Shoddy. It's quite poor, like it's quite dangerous at times. Um, it's pretty bad, like there's so much damage to the park, like all the copings are wobbly, all the ramps are rotten, and there's just holes everywhere. It's just causing like chaos here. Well, it does get a bit manic with all the danger hazards. Probably not for the best. There are about 50,000 holes. It's not really that good at the moment. I think a lot of the ramps are falling apart. Uh, sort of, yeah, it's gone downhill over the last couple of years, really. I think it's location, which is right by the sea, it's pretty harsh environment down there and the fact that it's overused, which is a good thing in my opinion. Obviously it's not good for the park if it's not rebuilt and kept in repair, but um, 
as for the, you know, as for overuse, I mean, it shows that there's so many people that want to go down there and, uh, and use it. Well, actually, I, I, I feel the location, this all came up many years back. Um, the, the one thing with skateboarding, whether it's skateboarding or whether it's um, the scooters or the, or the bikes, the, um, they're performers. They like an audience. And what better to be on the seafront? And um, it's in a prime location and everyone could be seen. It is clear to anyone who visits the park that the park is a danger. John says that the damage is due to location and overuse. But are these the only reasons for the damage? Or are there other factors which the creators of the park did not consider? I mean, there are some idiots that go down there just to mess it up and burn and drink and do all kinds of other stuff down there. But, um, you know, the core people that enjoy it, like the skaters, the BMXs, scooters, bladers, I mean, they're using it to, you know, to its um, death, basically. LA Bowl, they're progressing with um, a metered light system to put similar lighting to this on to the, to the bowl for various reasons, but for security and, um, uh, and of course we do lock it up these days at night, we've had to, because there are others that don't appreciate what's there and use it for, you know, hangouts for having a drink or whatever, which is, seems to be part of our life as well today that we've got to deal with. It seems that although the majority of the park users do use it for its intended purpose, there is still a minority who continue to use it in an illegal, antisocial manner which causes damage and gives the park a bad reputation. So what impact does the park really have on its community? Does it have a good influence or does it just attract unwanted trouble? I think it's a positive one. I mean, a lot of people seem to enjoy it, you know, have done for a very long time. Mm, like all the user groups really, like not just skaters, like BMXs, uh, rollerbladers, and now like, um, like razor skiers and stuff like that. They, everyone seems to have a good time down there. I think it's a really positive thing. I mean, it's a good place for people to go, uh, socialise and um, yeah, learn new skills. It's something where you can go out each day and um, yeah, just think of a trick and go and learn it. Um, I did a couple of new tricks today, thanks to you guys. Like, I just learned a couple on that thing and that's what you can do. You just get something in your mind and go and learn it. You know, and like I was saying before, it's, it challenges themselves, you know, um, progress and um, yeah, it, it's good in life really. I mean, if you can challenge yourself and achieve stuff in the things you like, then it kind of sets you to do yourself. In, uh, in other things you, you might uh, embark on in life as well. It is easy to see with the right care, attention and funding, the park could be a valuable resource to the community. So what would be the impact if the park were to close? It wouldn't leave me much to do and I'd probably, I'd take up some other sport but it wouldn't be as like, fun as riding. It would have a huge impact because I wouldn't have anywhere to go and neither would any of the other kids that would come down here. And. Um, yeah, we'd end up having to skate the streets and then the police and uh, the residents of the local areas don't get too uh, happy about that. It'd be pretty boring, just like you're always getting told off by the police for riding with no lights around the streets and all that. And everywhere else is like pretty like, poor because it's got glass and everything everywhere, but this place is it's all right, it just needs a bit of maintenance. I don't know, I doubt I'd take up another sport now. I probably would just go to Sandown or Newport like, most days. But... I don't know, it's good being here, well, this being here. I think a lot of people would be pretty gutted, you know, uh, especially all the skaters and the BMXs. Wouldn't be able to use it anymore. And, uh, you know, as I say, there's a lot of people who have gone down there over the last uh, eight or nine years and, you know, really enjoyed it and had a, still do and have a good time. It would be pretty negative. Um, we're, I don't want to go back in time because where were they before, um, the users? They were using... Um, the streets, the walls, the rails, well, that's, um, uh, that's not really acceptable, is it? It's better that they've got their own. And um, that's why I always, uh, my goal in life, I'll always um, um, uh, stay within that because I'm chairman of that committee and I'll always support them as much as I can. Well, you'd see a lot more people on the streets, young people on the streets, with not as much to do. And um, you guys know what it's like if you're bored and nothing to do. You mean you kind of find things to do, which is not usually the the most law-abiding things. But you know, bored kids, teenagers, adults, 
find their own entertainment, so definitely worth having there for, um, for something to do. After listening to the opinions of those who would be affected by the closure of the park, it is clear that it could have a negative effect on the community. At the moment it costs Roy Town Council around £2,000 a month to repair the broken parts of the park. This just seems like a short term solution to the problem. Eventually money will run out and the financial cuts will be made. Is this where the Isle of Wight Council should step in and help out with the funding of the park? This would not only help keep the park open, but it would give the users somewhere to skate and keep them off the streets.